It is inevitable. A massive Ukrainian offensive is probably coming. But I've got an idea to mask the assault. So, see that little swampy area Ukraine's got? There's a town there. And it's on the bottom of Romania. So what Ukraine does, this is like a week or more before this actually happens. Ukraine shuts off that town. Like complete block down. No one can get information. And then you get Romania to stop people going on the other side. So, event Russia will notice, hmm, this town's completely gone silent. This city, which is somewhat small city, but it has gone completely quiet. Nothing's coming out of it. Oh, there's these NATO troops that, and so they go to look at their satellite, and they see all these little commercial motorboats. And Russia gets concerned and stuff. And you get air defenses and stuff. So, Russia's concerned. And you put air defenses, so if Russia go, does attack, maybe a few of them go. But these motorboats are actually remote. A lot of them are remote controlled and stuff. But it looks like Ukraine's getting... You put up some fake tents and stuff, and it looks like Ukraine's preparing to attack. And then a day before, like, the attack comes, you know how you've got... You had those Ukrainians, like, drone boats, whatever, that attacked Russia before. You use them, along with a massive drone effect. And then... What you do, Ukraine does, is on the next day, you get, it does those little drone effective things. And, an air assault on, right, Sevastopol. So, the best hope of Ukraine is that they get this footage of a Ukrainian air craft over Sevastopol. Massive air assault, and all these little remote boats. A lot of them wouldn't have any people in it. They're like sort of decoys and stuff. And at this time, there would be units, like spies or whatever, in Ukraine. And during this attack, they put on uniform and they start Russian, attacking Russian and stuff. So Russia get like, Ukrainian troops are on Crimea. So, you, so they've got all these little motorboats coming. And... The mad ones will ha and a lot of them will have, like, be crude with only one, two people, on, like, the guy driving it, and someone with a man pad. So they'll get all these helicopters and ships, which are under attack from these little motorboat, uh, seawater drone drones, and it'll be complete chaos, and their helicopters are getting shot down. And Ukraine Air Force is harassing them. It's air fighting, massive fighting and stuff. So all of Russia's high command is focusing on this. And you see those arrows on the screen? Or was on the thumbnail? So you land some troops in Kherson. And you land some troops in Crimea and stuff or whatever. And what happens is all of you, Russia's attention is on this. Because... This plan would also be very well if the Ukrainian ship that got scuttled or whatever was actually still working. Oh, wow. Well. Because that could be a, a cover and stuff. So this is intense battle around Sevastopol. You've got Ukrainian troops in Sevastopol fighting and stuff. And it's really, really hectic. And all these motorboats, which... You, the mo some motorboats will get and main motorboats will get for and crash on the shore and stuff. So Russia's freaking out and stuff. And then, at, like in the afternoon, Ukraine wants to send massive counter counter offensive. Now, I'd do these small scale counter offensive, like small enough where they can be concealed. So, Russia will notice where all these troops are mastering. Maybe have a face mastering on, like, things that Russia think, oh, yeah, it's a diversion. Ukraine's going to probably attack it, but you don't attack there. You get all these small assault groups and they attack. And so that's generally my idea of a 
interesting novel idea for a Ukrainian offensive to have a dare version for the Russians.